When my grandmother got here almost 100 years ago, I'm sure that she never could have imagined that just two generations later, one of her grandsons would be serving as a member of the United States Congress, and the other would be standing with you here today to say these words, I am a candidate for President of the United States of America. Welcome to episode 23 of the Left Shoe Politics Podcast. I am the host for this episode, Rick Shoe. With me today is professor, film critic, and writer, Zaki Hassan. Zaki, how are you, sir? Good evening. Good to have you back, man. Yeah, always, always, uh, you know, in interesting times, it's always good to have good people to talk to. Well, I feel the same way. When I texted you the other day to see if you could do this, I wanted just a one-on-one chat. Um, you are very popular with our listeners. They just, oh, wow. they love you. You were, and I say this every time you're on, you were on our very first episode. You've been on several since. And so I wanted to sort of dedicate this show to you. Jeremy and Michael aren't joining us on this one. Uh, no other guests are joining us either. So it's just you and I. Oh, man, and pressure's y- on. Yeah, I just want to pick your brain, Professor, if that's okay, and uh, get your opinion on a few things because it's a crazy time. Uh, lots going on with the Trump administration, and then we are, we are also officially entering the 2020 race. Hmm. So what I thought I would do is get a few, shall we say, predictions from you first. That'll be kind of the first part, and then I have another segment as well. I want to get your response to some stuff. But just some quick, I don't want to say quick fire, take your time, but let's just let's have a quick chat here about predictions. Okay, so I'm going to just throw these at you, and you just run with it, man. Um, when do you think... The Mueller report report is going to get released. Uh, I mean, if I were to guess, I would say within the next sixty days. Okay, and what do you think the impact of that is going to have on our current political climate? Well, that's really the question, right? I mean, I th- I think what Donald Trump has been doing for the last you know year and a half or however long since the probe was first announced, he's been. Uh, very meticulously seeding the ground with shards of glass uh, in the hopes that nothing good will sprout. Mm -hmm. Uh, In other words, he spent this entire time talking about, you know, uh, you know, witch hunt this, no collusion that, Peter Strzok that, lover Lisa Page this, just just putting as much chum into the water as possible. Why? So that that 35% of the country that is ride or die with Donald Trump uh, will not believe anything no matter what. Uh, I I think his calculation is that that 35% is enough to sort of, uh, for, for the fate of the country to, to turn on. Absolutely. It's sort of been this discredit campaign. And it's interesting how, as you look at the timeline of when this started and his attacks on it, when he actually started calling Bob Mueller by name, which was pretty recently, actually, yep. when you can consider everything. But a couple of quick things I'll throw at you, and we can move on from this. But we don't know what's in this report. What we do know is just in recent days, and we are recording this on January 13th, 2019, and because by tomorrow this will be old news because this thing, uh, that it's not just the times we're living in, it's particularly with this, this presidency. One ridiculous tweet and he shifts the news cycle or something breaks and some other person is indicted, uh, indicted or whatever, it changes everything. But what happens if, okay, what, what happens if this comes out? And it's actually very underwhelming that there's no proof of collusion. There's, there's no, it's, it's not as bad as many of us expect it to be and, and perhaps even hope it to be. What happens then? Does that help him? I mean, in the long term? Well, I mean, I, th- I think the truth is that um, he, he has been, since the beginning, a beneficiary of lowered expectations. So mm-hmm. in in that sense, yeah, sure. Uh, if the if the report comes out and um, is as you say, you know, quote unquote, underwhelming, then yeah, I mean, obviously, that that's that's good for him, and and bad for the Democrats. However, you know, we we have to play play the percentages here. I mean, what are the odds that he's going to come out of this with his hands completely clean? Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I, every day there's something new. I mean, when you think about it, every day there's a new story that in any other, uh, 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 per, uh, you know, place in time would be the story for like a week. 
Yes, su- yes. Su- such as the story that broke that he's been hiding his correspondence with Vladimir Putin. Yeah, that, that it, he's been telling the translator and seizing that information and not even sharing it. Our intelligence agencies don't even know much about those conversations of anything. Yeah, I mean, right? Like you, the president tells his translator, "Hey, keep this shit under your hat. In fact, give me your notes." Mm-hmm. And we we've just moved on to our next shiny object. Like this is bananas and i hate doing the what if it was obama thing but i mean seriously come on what if it was any other president right. and and for anybody out there rolling your eyes going why would rick ask, ask zaki you know, if the report came back if it was not good for him would that be good you know what was underwhelming would that be good for him of course it would but there's a larger context to that question is that and it's to zaki's point it's these expectations of his and and we get to sort of Watch him, in some cases, benefit from these lower expectations. If he goes on national TV and doesn't just start saying racist thing and like throwing mud at the screen, it's, he was all presidential. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the debates, all he had to do was show up and not piss himself. Mm-hmm. And people were like, oh, you know, he, he did a good job. You know, he at, at that uh, uh, you know, joint congressional address uh, after the Syria uh, attack, Remember Van Jones? Like, oh, this is—he became, pre, a pre, he became the president today. And and Van Jones was not like, oh, I'm I'm a Trumper now. But the point he was making, which I understood, was still badly made because it really it's a, it does a disservice to how badly he is doing. I haven't seen him. And I'm just trying to be honest here. I haven't seen him look presidential to me maybe once or twice here and or there i don't even I, but i can't really even put my finger on it i mean he he is he never he never can rise to the occasion as president i guess oh, no. is the best way i mean unfortunately he he uh he lowers everything else around right. him you know it's it's like it's like superman 2 remember when when gene hackman and ned Beatty are escaping and and they throw down the ladder to ned Beatty and he's like pulling the helicopter pulling, pulling down. it down and they're get off get off yeah that's Trump. You know? That's, that is Trump. Okay, pop culture reference for those <laughs> that are listening that are like, what the hell are they talking about? Superman 2. Zachy and I also do like comic book uh, superhero podcasts. A different world, but uh, still, that's a great reference. Come days, on. You, it's the same world. Because it's all the same. Yeah, it, it is. It's all the same world. Come on, you guys all know you've seen Superman 2 and you loved it. Um, all right, move on to the next question here. Do you think any of his family members will be indicted? Oh, Whether yeah, it's I, Ivanka or Don Jr. or whoever. <sighs> I think Jared and Don Jr. The clock is ticking. Okay. Yeah, Do you think I mean, both? You think both of them will? Uh, if 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 I were to bet, I would bet for sure on Don Jr. But I think both of them are uh, in in treading through some some questionable territory. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Do you think he's going to get impeached? No. I mean, unfortunately. Well, never say never. But but if I were if I were to make a prediction now, I would say no. I mean, I mean, what's it take, right? I mean, you know, it's it's extraordinary how we had two years. Like, this is the thing, right? This is the whole thing. Like, oh, the Republicans. It's just you know, it, if it, once Trump is out of there, they'll be reasonable again. It's like no, 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 because uh, the Republican Party is being the Republican Party. Trump happened. Trump is uh, of it. You know, he he came in. And and took ownership of the voters that the Republican Party has been nurturing for the last thirty years. Uh, we we know this because uh, the the government shutdown that we're in the midst of, it started uh, under a Republican House, mm-hmm. right? So so the Senate passed uh, the the CR the continuing resolution that uh, Ted Cruz voted for, by the way. That, that exactly that everybody voted for, mm-hmm. and 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 uh, your your senator Ted Cruz, I should say. Mm-hmm. Pride of Texas. Can't wait um, to talk. We'll talk about Beto <laughs> later. Don't don't you worry, sir. <laughs> we'll um, but but the point is, so so Trump has his you know uh, you know he, he his fifis get hurt because Rush Limbaugh and Ann Coulter say mean things about him, and so he's like, no, forget, it, I'm not gonna do it. Well, you know, Paul Ryan, who was still speaker, could have done. He'd been like, well, keeping the government open is more important, so screw you. We're gonna pass this, and you know. I mean, he's he, think about it. He's like seven days away from being out the door forever. It it means nothing to him. Nope. And still, he. I mean, you know what I mean. I I have no words, Rick. But this is my point. These are garbage people. They are. They're <laughs> absolutely garbage people. 
And to your point a moment ago, when you talk about that he is basically governing based off Ann Coulter's tweets, that's not hyperbole. I mean, he... Yeah. Okay, so Oliver Darcy... Let me pull this up real quick. So Oliver Darcy, yes, from CNN. He tweeted earlier, just, I don't know, a couple hours ago. He said, Trump understands that conservative media personalities like Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh hold the keys to his base, and so it's highly unlikely he's going to stray from them with the government shutdown, border issues, etc., Democrats are effectively negotiating with their right-wing media, which will lead to my next question. What is your prediction of this shutdown? Are, are Pelosi and, Sh- and Schumer going to give him money for his wall? Where does this end? Well, what we know for certain is that there is no way Pelosi and Schumer are given. There's just no way. Uh, they have every reason in the world not to. Uh, both in terms of the precedent that it's set, uh, and then also in terms of all the polling, not just among the Democratic base, but in, in the public. I, the, the wall is like 35%. Mm-hmm. So it's all the Trump faithful. So why would the Speaker of the House, uh, the third most powerful person in the country, be like, all right, yeah, sure, no problem. There's just no way. So so then it falls to um, the Republicans, right? So So Trump isn't going to give in. Because Trump's idea of negotiation, right, Mr. Art of the Deal, is I get everything I want, you get nothing that you want. And he doesn't have empathy, so that's actually a strong suit for him in this regard. He doesn't care about these workers. He actually had the nerve to say, well, most of these people are Democrats anyway. Yeah. So when I, tell, when I tell people this guy's not the president of the United States, he's the president of his base, and they're, oh, man, fuck you, you're just being, you're being a little dramatic. I'm like, no, no, he actually is. He governs via Fox News. Yep. He doesn't care about. He doesn't care that there's workers suffer, suffering as long as they are Democrats. And that he's he's on record saying that because he really feels that way. Quite frankly, I don't think he cares at all. And this whole notion he talk, he talks about, you know, there's all these workers that are out of work, but you know, a lot of them are calling us up and telling us that you know we're, this is hurting us, but we stand by you, Mr. President. Like, first of all, fuck you. No, they're not. Secondly, yeah. how, how are they getting through to you? They're calling the President of the United States. Give me a break. It's all well, so rude. They're calling in between. All the previous presidents were calling him to, to express solidarity for the wall. Yeah, I like that everybody came out and at least said somebody in their their camp, whether, whether it was Carter, or Obama, or Bush, whoever, it was basically like, nope, didn't happen. All right, so next question. Now, this is a there's so many things, there's so, so many variables here for you to be able to answer these, and I understand that. And some of what we just said and have, have discussed will obviously play into these next couple of questions. But just really simply put. Do you think that Trump, assuming he ran, in fact, let me ask this question first. I'm going to jump around a little bit. Do you think he's going to run again? How's that for a question? I think that a lot of it will come down to what happens in the next year, both in terms of Robert Mueller, but also SDNY and also House Congressional Investigations. Uh so as of what we know right now, I mean, I, I, I'm going to assume, um, assuming it's, you know, status quo ante, then yeah, he's going to run again. But we don't know what is going to happen now that the House has subpoena power. I mean, that is a major, major variable that's thrown in the mix. That's completely new. Do you think that Senate Republicans will break? Because I know that... That I have a very strong feeling that the House Republican or the House, I'm sorry, Pelosi would have um, enough material, I guess is the way to phrase it, to actually impeach the president. If they don't already have it, I think they kind of already do. I'm not an expert on the topic, obviously, but it sure seems like they do. But let's say the Mueller report comes out and says, damn, as I think it's going to be. They have enough information, but nothing is like tangible. There's no, there's nothing on tape or on video. There's no audio, sure. right? Senate Republicans aren't going to break because he's still going to have his base. Do you, what do you think? Do you think that I'm right when I say that? Does it take something like, do we have to have tapes? Like Cohen's going to testify to Congress and I believe in March, if that's correct. That's going to be very interesting. Yeah. What if he has tapes of, of Trump confessing to, all these things that he's being accused of, like, yes, we're going to pay off these women with my, with campaign, fan, you know, we're going to break campaign finance laws, cut and dry to pay off these women I've had an affair with so I can, I can get, I can get elected and I've got a call tomorrow with, with Putin and we're going to talk about lifting sanctions if I'm elected. If it is, it's that dramatic. Does it have to be like on tape and like in, in crystal clear for Senate Republicans to break or is there a breaking point that's not quite so dramatic? Um, 
That, well, the truth of it is that I don't even know if something being on tape would make much of a difference. I just I use that because that's what brought down Nixon. Once yeah. once well, that once the tapes came out, then he, he lost his support. I mean, I mean, three years ago, a tape should have brought down Trump, and it didn't. Right? I mean, when he bragged about committing sexual assault. Sure. So I mean, no, I agree. We're in yeah. like the wild west now. You know, I I I don't know. I, you know, I think I think that when we look at the makeup of the of the Senate. What's what's the threshold they need for impeachment? Mm-hmm. Like I don't even know what's what's the number. What's the magic yeah, number? and and that is the question, and I don't have an answer for it either. I really don't. Okay. And if you're listening out there, hit us up on Twitter and let us know what you think. Hit us on Facebook because we we don't know. We don't know. And I watch people like Lindsey Graham just get worse and worse and worse. And Rudy Giuliani, who's not who's not a House member, but he's still a former you know respected Republican mayor of New York and. And he is now saying, you know, when we get the Mueller report, we can we can alter it. They're not gods before we give it to Congress. I mean, you've got Lindsey Graham telling him to call for the the national emergency for his wall. I don't. It just it's so it's you're right. Which is what did you say? The Twilight Zone or Bizarro World or <laughs> the Wild West? The Wild West. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's such a crazy crazy deal. Um, do you think he's going to call for a national emergency on this thing? Is that how he ends it? I think uh, I think it'll hit that point, and he'll try. Um, but I, you know, I, I, it, it'll go right to the courts, and I think that's what the Republican senators want, is you know, a way for them to not have to take a stand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it's a very dangerous precedent. You know, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's this. I, I tweeted the other day. I'm like, we're about to slide into the dumbest dictatorship of all time. Mm-hmm. Like it's, you know what I mean. It, it. This is how it starts the, over something stupid. As you know, like that. That's the thing, right? People like, oh, he, he, like the the Hitler comparisons. Oh, he's not like Hitler. Uh, there's no concentration camps or whatever. And I'm not saying that was that's what Trump would do. But it's like, yeah, Hitler didn't start out with the concentration camps. Like he worked his way up there. He kept stress testing the boundaries of what was acceptable. And it, and and again, I'm not saying he's Hitler. That being said. He has certain uh, uh, autocratic tendencies that we are already aware of. And so why put him in a position where he gets to find out even more things he's able to do? You know what I mean? Well, he's already talked about, you know, people, uh, military that are on the border to to, to fire at will if they're somebody's throwing rocks at him. I mean, it's it's little things. And again, I'm not calling him Hitler either because Hitler is, is the uh, pure, raw evil. And I get that. But yeah. um, but there are some things that you have to learn from from history, and when you have someone that has a tendency to like gravitate towards dictators, I was watching yesterday. Joey and, Reed and, was, and by by the way, Rick, it's, it's yeah, go six, ahead. It's sixty in the Senate for mm-hmm. impeachment. That's that's what they would need. Yeah, and then you would have Mike Pence that could break that tie. And uh, how badly does he want to be the forty sixth president? I don't know. But yeah. that's the only way. That's the only way he's going to get it because he will never win an election, a nation, yeah. national, nationwide election, and they know that Trump is. Maybe they're holding on to Trump because they know that the math is not on their side or anything. He did win. He squeezed it out. It it, it happened. But they know that that's not going to happen again with just an, another candidate. Someone like Trump could could still get reelected. So that's my next question. Let's just assume that he's not impeached. Let's assume that he does actually run. Can he get re- reelected? And yes, this will segue to our next segment, which is about 2020 hopefuls. <laughs> so there's your, I'm setting up the, the segue here. Like, um, um, you know, I don't, I don't rule anything out. I mean, my assumption, as soon as he got elected, my, my operating principle has been that he will get reelected. Absolutely. And, and I say that for, for a variety of reasons, but foremost among them, uh, we tend to reelect presidents. We tend to reelect presidents, and also what happened to me after that election was I, um, and maybe this is a good thing, but I, I, I suddenly realized that I, I don't need to put my faith in voters, that they're, they're, the masses aren't capable, or they are capable of making really dumb decisions. Yeah. And if, he's gonna, if he could get elected after the way he treated the Khan family, after his POW remarks, after the grab him by the you-know-what, after the mocking the handicap reporter. Nobody out there effing tell me that that's not what he did because that's what he did. Don't insult my intelligence. And, and he still gets elected. 
then why do I think that all this heinous shit that he's he's done would mean he wouldn't? And so when I hear when I see people on Twitter or elsewhere say, "Well, hell, there's no way he's gonna get reelected," I'm like, he could absolutely get reelected, and he might get reelected. And as opposed to us thinking he's gonna get impeached or resign or or whatever or have a landslide um, a loss, I don't want to think that way. I want to go into this thing as a fight, like it's a fight of our life. That yes, he could, and yes, he might. Yeah. And let's let's take that. <laughs> This very contrived segue that I've mentioned three times. So let's talk about the 2020 hopefuls because obviously there has to be somebody that takes him down. Okay. This is again, assuming that he's going to run again, which I think he will. And I think that he might still could get reelected. And so that's the mentality that I personally have. And I encourage everyone to have it. Please do. (laughs) Um, And as we also go into this 2020 chat, I want to say this at the very top. Um, I mean, I'm going to personally say some negative things about some people on this list. Um, there are people that I actually don't even like, and there are people I absolutely don't even want to see run. But if any of these people are the nominee, any of them, I would vote for them 100%. I would support them enthusiastically. I will rally behind the nominee because this is too important to unseat this man. No third party votes, no symbolic voting. Not this time. Please, please, everybody. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do here is Zach, I'm going to name... There's, I mean, look, not everybody's announced that they're running. As it stands right now today, the two that are actually official are Julian Castro and um, Tulsi Gabbard, right? And I guess maybe Elizabeth Warren, but she's more of a exploratory stage which, right now. Which is, I mean, that's that's a formality, right? I mean, sure. Should, yeah, yeah. You should take that as meaning she, she intends to run. Absolutely. So I'm just saying technically there's only been two official announcements, but really there's three, which is Elizabeth Warren, Tulsi Gabbard, and Julian Castro from the great state of Texas. What's up, Julio? Julian. <laughs> Julian. Julian. Um, all right. So I'm going to just – and then there's probably like 20 people on, on that list. I've narrowed it down to seven for purposes of this podcast, and I think these are the seven that are probably – the most likely to get the most attention. Of course, we know how this works. I could be completely off base and none of these people would be, will be on the list in, in four months. And we're talking about Cory Booker and, 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 uh, you know, I don't know, uh, Mike Bloomberg. I don't know. I did. I don't, I just don't know. Um, okay. So Julian Castro, what do you think of him? Just your general thoughts. Does he excite you? Anything you want to say about him? I've liked what I've seen of him. Uh, I, I haven't seen his announcement speech, but I mean, I've heard him talk, you know, when he was uh, HUD secretary under President Obama. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's he's young, he is brown, and uh, he is charismatic. And uh, in this day and age, uh, all three of those are uh, winning uh, characteristics for a candidate to have, especially if they're trying to get the Democratic nomination. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think that his immigrant stories, and specifically being Hispanic, is a very potent uh, repost to sort of everything that that Donald Trump represents, and so that that's definitely uh, th- there's potential there for something. Yeah, the his speech, which is actually in our cold opening on this show, just everybody that that probably heard that. That's why I had that because I thought it was very good and it was somewhat Obama esque. Um, even his manner was, of course, they have a good relationship, so I can see why he would sort of. Um, um, have some characteristics of uh, of Obama, but I, you know, I know firsthand. Um, I live in Dallas, by the way, and and Zachy's in the Bay Area outside of San Francisco. Just for you guys listening, but I know a lot. You know, I had a um, I was I oversaw a restaurant in San Antonio when I was used to be an operations guy for a restaurant chain, and he um, the my customers there at that store they loved him, and I know it's anecdotal, but he was a popular mayor, sure. and and he's he's a, he's a very uh, you're right. It just the fact that he's he's younger, he's he's vigorous, he's in shape, he's attractive, he's Hispanic. Uh, he is basically the antithesis of Trump, which is which is what we need. Um, I like him. I don't. I'm not saying that's that's why I want to be the nominee, but I'm I'm glad that he's in the race. And I'm looking forward to hearing his voice. Do you agree with that? Totally sentiment? agree. Okay, so let's move on to this next person. Who, um, man, I'm. I'm I'm having some problems with this 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 woman, and and uh, I, I want a female president. By the way, so it's okay if if we don't like a person that happens to be a female. That doesn't mean that anybody's being sexist. I uh, just want to say that too because I think we're there's like sexist people that don't want women, and then there's also people that if you say anything negative about a woman, you're automatically being sexist. Kind of things. This weird thing going on because I've been getting that on Twitter, and I'm like, hold on. I enthusiastically supported Hillary Clinton both in 2008, 2016. Don't throw that at me. Nonsense. I don't know if I like this lady. 
Tulsi Gabbard. Okay, I have some issues with some stuff about her. So, what do you think of her, Zachy? Have you read upon her? Do you? What do you have any opinions? On? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of hers, and and I mean honestly, I I think, and this is gonna sound bad, but I think she's sort of a distraction because I just don't see her being the nominee. Mm-hmm. Um, I see her as sort of like a, a Jill Stein in this whole thing. Yes. Um, and, and yeah, you know, so it's almost like, uh, you know, the, the, the political views she's expressed in the past are, I find problematic, uh, in, in some instances, I mean, she's progressive, uh, on a, uh, you know, to, to, she she's 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 health care minimum wage yeah stuff like, like that, that stuff yeah. with you know but the problem is that uh her her foreign policy views are kind of all over the place and um yeah i mean i she doesn't have my support I'll no she it. doesn't I'll just leave it at that yeah me, me me too and you know i've um i've kind of looked at some things she has talked about uh with with muslims with gays with uh, she's got a little bit of a of a sketchy past and then also she tweeted during the Obama administration, she was praising Putin for bombing Syria and, and, and wondering why Obama wasn't doing the same. And I'm going, what, what, what is this all about? And then her meeting with Assad. And also I say to people all the time, like that are Trump supporters. I'm like, ha, look, I'll just say, I'll, I'll say this to you. I'm like, I'm talking to them, right? Is David Duke enthusiastically supports this guy. So does Robert Spencer. So do a lot of white nationalists. I will never support anyone that those guys are proud of or excited about. Because if I do, then I have to really question what yeah. the hell are they excited about? And why am I still supporting this person? How is that even possible? And they both have praised this woman more than once. And so is Steve Bannon. And that's that's a problem for me. So she's got a, there's a lot of issues with her, and so I don't I don't know. And I think you're right. I think she's kind of the Jill Stein of this whole thing, and I'm I'm a little concerned about her supporters. But again, I want I want to hear what she has to say. But she's on record. She has a pass. It's not like we can't talk about that. But yeah, I'm um, I'm hoping that that's something that fades. But she's going to get a lot of attention, and I and I am grateful for her service. And she's an, a rock war vet, and that's that's all kick ass and everything. But uh yeah a lot of a lot of problems okay yeah. any final words on her no nope, i think you said it okay um all right how about elizabeth warren i mean i like elizabeth uh warren i like her a lot i've liked her ever since she was head of the the consumer protection bureau uh, i mean she's not going to be the nominee so uh i think her goal is to pull the party further to the right, which I can, I, or for, to, to the right, to the left, excuse me. Uh, I can certainly respect that. Um, I think, I think she wants to be more of a, a king or queen maker, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, again, it's just, I just don't see her being the nominee. I don't see her being the nominee either. And, um, we are on episode 23 and, uh, episode 22, me, Jeremy and Michael, we did this just the three, three, there's just the three left. You guys just did a show together. And I express my thoughts on her, so you can go back and just listen to that show. Also, a little shameless plug there. <laughs> and uh, I'll just leave it at that. I don't think she's going to be the nominee, and I'm... Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, she does get in her Trump skin, though. I like that about her. Yeah. Um, but she didn't do herself any favors with that DNA testing thing. That's Again, that's a conversation for another day, but yeah, uh, she's a, she's, she is a, a... I like her in the Senate, and we need her, so we'll leave it at that. Okay. All right, so here's an interesting guy because it's really weird to be a uh, outside of yes, I've lived in Oklahoma, which is certainly a, a redder state than Texas, and I've lived in uh, in California, um, but I am a Dallas native. This has been the majority of my life here. I'm a Texan, and it's just pretty awesome for me to have like two people that I'm excited about that are both from my state that are Democrats that are you know, running for president. One of them is we, and I think the other one will as well. And that is Beto O'Rourke. And, um, so before I say anything, the floor is yours, sir. What do you think of him? What do you think about his potential run? Oh, I mean, I, I love Beto O'Rourke. You know, I, I, I think we talked about him, um, the last time I was on with you guys. I can't remember. It was, it was you, me and Chris, right? The cl- uh, with Chris Clow. We did. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I An- another show for you guys to go listen to. I don't have go. the episode pulled up, but just Zachy song, Rick Shue and Chris Clow. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we talked about Beto O'Rourke. I can't remember, but, but I mean, I'll be shocked if he doesn't run, you know? Um, and, and he's sitting, he's sitting down with Oprah, right? Next week or something. Okay. Well, there we go then. Right. Well, no, no, but I'm just saying, but all the speculation in 2020, then she's sitting down with him to do an interview. There's, uh, it's, um, you know, 
I, I so. think I think he's making all the the stops on his way to announce a, um, a campaign. What do you what 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 excites you about him the most, or what what do you like about him the most in terms? Well, of I mean, I for- I like I mean he is like he's like Nega Trump. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like everything that Trump's base like about him, we like about Beto, but in like a different way. Right. Because Trump, oh, he's unscripted. He says what's on his mind. He's, you know, and it's like we like that about Beto O'Rourke, too, except he's not using his powers for evil. Mm -hmm. And and so I think there's something very powerful about, you know, just being genuine. I mean, say what you want about Donald Trump. What his supporters like about him is that they feel he is genuine. He's a genuine piece of shit, but that's what they like about him. Right. He's, right. He's not a, you know, a, a, a freeze dried politician. No, he's not. You and know? I and I get why that was appealing. Too yeah. bad that, that the irony of all that is they elect someone that's a bigger fucking liar than any politician we've ever had. Yeah. Right. You know, but, but, I mean, it, people want somebody from outside. They want to change. You know, it's like I said before the election, I tweeted this. I'm like, just because you don't like the, the carpeting in your den doesn't mean you firebomb the cul-de-sac, you know? Uh, so good. <laughs> that's what that's what happened with Trump, you know. However, Beto O'Rourke, he he is he has empathy oozing out of every pore. He is genuine. He is gracious. He is kind. He has all these characteristics that provide all the contrasts, right? Because because in hindsight, and 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 uh, you know, uh, this is not in any way negating the support that I had for Hillary Clinton, but. People, many people, I should say, made a choice between, well, he's a piece of shit and she's corrupt as hell, so let's pick our poison, right? Right. Again, I'm I'm not saying they were right for thinking that, but the narrative was out there about her. Sure. Right. She's been, uh, she has, and she's always had that against her. And quite frankly, some of that is sexism. I mean, it just is. Some of it uh, is sexism. Uh, some yeah. of it is honestly uh, uh, stupidity on her part. You know, I agree with that to an extent. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is this is the thing. She she didn't do herself uh, uh, favors in some instances, and so regardless, you know, the point is, she came into the campaign with a lot of baggage, um, and so a lot of people were like, "Well, she's a known commodity, and um, I don't like her." Right. She's so, she, it, it, listen, and that was a populist movement. Um, and and even though he's not, he is very much the swamp. But but you know the juxtaposition of like people wanting something new and fresh versus old uh, DC. Uh, Clinton probably wasn't the smartest choice, which is why as much as I like, um, uh, oh my goodness, what's his first name? Uh, Kennedy. The oh uh, uh, Joseph Kennedy. Uh, Joseph Kennedy. Yeah, I, I I just like I don't think a Kennedy is the answer either. He's great. I love I, him. I don't think this is his time. Not his time. No, we don't need that. You know, I would take Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama, to me, I know she's not going to run, and, and she's not going to run against Trump especially, but by chance if she did, she would win in a landslide. I'm, I'm, I just, I know she would, yeah. but unfortunately that's not going to happen. So I'm going to get off my Michelle Obama um, wish list that she would run. Okay, so but here's the thing about Beto also for me is that he inspires, okay? I saw it firsthand here in all over Dallas and when I was down in Austin. And, you know, he almost won a statewide election here in Texas with under 200,000 votes in a state Senate race. That was insane that he got that close. It was under 3%. I don't know if you guys understand how significant that is. He inspired people. There, there was just, he was just outnumbered. The math just isn't quite here yet, but it's getting there. I say here, I mean Texas. But I also think of Beto runs i think that i think that texas is in play in 2020 hmm. if he's if he's on the top of the ticket i really do and i yeah. say that because hillary only lost by nine points and people don't like her here hmm. okay and uh and then he he lost by under three percent so anyway he inspires that's important we need it okay next person and i really like this lady a lot okay so i'm curious what you think of her kamala harris well she's our california senator so i'm mm-hmm. i'm a fan you know yeah i think she's a badass uh i i mean when i look at the the bench of candidates right if we, if you if we just, just look at julian castro look at kamala harris uh beto o'rourke let's say they're kind of the top tier and then everyone sort of else underneath them that's that's a pretty good bench you know mm-hmm. uh you know i 
as as much as I like Joe Biden, uh, I think his role is to be a kingmaker. I don't think it's his. I don't. I think the moment has passed, unfortunately. Well, he's on the list. I was yeah, going to ask you about him. I, I, yeah. I mean, I love Joe Biden. Uh, he will. I will enthusiastically support him if he gets the nomination. Uh, I just don't know that he can win. I don't. I don't think. I mean, I don't know. It's it's tough to say. And I'll say this. I'll I'll frame it this way. Um. Here in California, we did our experiment with a celebrity governor. Uh, it didn't go so well. Although that governor got elected twice, I should say, Governor Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. And after he got termed out, who did we elect? We elected Jerry Brown, who is like the definition of a patrician career politician. He had previously been governor already. But we elected him again twice. He just left office. And, you know, I think to some extent people wanted that they wanted okay we tried sort of the loudmouth celebrity thing now let's hire a guy who's just going to do his job and we're not going to have to think about him every day Mm -hmm. so i could see biden winning in sort of a jerry brown calculation yeah and you know he's he was a beloved vp and he is kind of nostalgic of the obama era and let me throw this at you real quick ed randell was on um meet the press this morning Mm -hmm. And he told Chuck Todd, if it was up to me, and I'm paraphrasing here, so forgive me, that Biden would will, will, will run, and he'll come out, and this is going to be his platform. Here's the thing. We need to make room for all these younger people that just entered Congress. They are the future of the Democratic Party. But the time now is a steady hand, a veteran, a seasoned person to come in and, and turn this ship around and get rid of this guy in the, off, in, in the White House and make everything right. I'm here to announce my presidency. I'm going to run for one term. I don't, I'm not going to seek re-election. I'm going to make room for everyone else. I, I'm, and I'm also going to be able to focus razor sharp because I'm not going to be concerned about getting re-elected. I'm not going to be campaigning to get re-elected four years to fix this mess. And then we're going to turn it over to new blood or whatever. And I was like, that actually really resonates with me. And it takes the age thing off the table. And he is a beloved former VP. And there's something about that that's very compelling, especially if he angles it where it's like, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm putting some more words in, in Red Dale's mouth in this regard, but this was more kind of where I was thinking in my head as he was speaking. But to really angle it where it's endorsing the, the young guns and they're going to take over and I'm going to step aside after one term. And, I, and there's something about that that's pretty powerful. Um, but anyway, here's, here's the, here's the problem I see there. Uh, you, you, what you're essentially doing is saying that as soon as you take the oath of office, you're a lamb duck. Well, I, I don't know. There's, it takes the H thing off the table. And if you angle it where you're saying, I'm not going to like, cause I'm all for like term limits and I'm, I'm, I'm for like a president getting elected even and serving one six year term. I think they do that in Mexico. And I like that because I don't like that. A president spends half their first term just trying to get reelected. And if you take that off the table and say, uh, uh-uh, uh, I'm just going to be working. There's something about that that I think is pretty compelling. And I mean, and, uh, but but what incentive does the other side have to work with you and get stuff done? Well, yeah, but see, that's just it. Is it if does, if everything is about getting reelected? It just it seems like I don't know. I mean, those are good questions, Zachy. I don't know, and I have to reconcile some of that stuff in my head. It's not a perfect scenario, yeah. but it but it did. It, it, I, I think it's smarter than him. Running and not doing that sure. for him, for him, sure, sure, right. Anyway, but that's those are good questions. I yeah. don't know. I, I can't wait to hear people's response to this one. Um, one last prediction, and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrap this thing up. Do you think Bernie Sanders is gonna run? No, I think he's no. Done. I think his moment has passed. Do you think it should be done? Do I think his moment should be done? Yeah, I think his moment should have been done uh, before he announced last time. That's my opinion, but I'm not a Bernie fan, Rick. I'm not either. <laughs> I I. I I, I'm getting to I kind of don't like him, and I'm sorry for all you guys out there that support us and you love him. I respect you for it. We can all talk about it on Facebook or Twitter. I, I was a, a fan of his, but I think that he he his um, his candidacy ended up becoming sort of like the schmutz drain in your in your sink, where all yeah. the anti-Hillary sentiment just got bundled together in a little basket. You know. Yeah. So well said. Yeah. Okay, Zachy, what's your dream ticket? Do you have a dream ticket for 2020? <sighs> uh. Uh, Harris O'Rourke, O'Rourke Harris. I don't care. I'm kind of leaning that way myself, yeah. and and I know Jeremy and Michael are pulling their hair out, hair out right now. My left shoe partners, because that's I don't I don't think that's where their heads are at. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I, I'm with you. I'm like, 
and uh, to our our buddy Matty Fleck, I'll give we'll give a shout out to him, our, our friend. That's his dream ticket. Mm-hmm. And he when I, when I saw him tweet that out, I read it. and I was like, I I think I, I think I love that combination. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I, I just do. Anyway, okay, so Beto Kamala Kamala Beto whatever. Uh, I I'm a I'm a little concerned with a woman being on top of the ticket. And let me let me say this before I get you know chastised for saying that. I want a woman president. I think we should have had twenty by now. Yeah. I don't I don't trust voters. Okay. This this election's too important. We need to get rid of him. I hope to be proven wrong. And we're gonna get a woman president in the next ten or two or three cycles. We have to. We have to write that ship. But who's the biggest threat to a woman being on top of the ticket? White women. And you guys scare the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know if I trust you guys to make the right decision on that. So if we do end up with a woman on the top of the ticket, I just hope anybody that runs against him wins, and I hope we can get past this bullshit where a woman president is nothing out of the ordinary. Yep. But yeah, but I am a little nervous about a woman being on top of the ticket. I am for that reason <laughs> because I don't trust men and I don't trust white women <laughs> to 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 do the right thing. It sucks. It's not me. Yeah. I have a se- I have a seven year old daughter. It's like, Daddy, why don't we have a girl? Why have we never had a girl president? I'm like, I don't have a I don't have a good answer for you. It sucks. <laughs> All right. So anyway, Beto Harris Harris. O'Rourke, whatever. All right, that's our dream ticket. Zachy, thanks, man. Yeah, I think thank you I so just much for having me. I, I think our listeners are going to really like your uh, your insight. They always do. So why don't you plug something and let's get the hell out of here? Uh, well, please check out the Movie Film Podcast. Uh, it's uh, one word, Movie Film, and uh, it comes out uh, every couple weeks. Me and my partner Brian Hall talking about the latest movie releases, and usually every month we do a little film commentary too. It's a lot of fun and uh, not not much politics in there. So it's it's uh, entertainment, not politics. And where can people read your reviews? I know you're a, an official Rotten Tomato um, certified movie critic, but where can they just go to move to read your reviews? Yeah, thank you. If you go to zackyscorner.com, that's Z-A-K-I-S corner. That's also my Twitter. Just add an at. Just and listen, if you guys are on Twitter or on Facebook, you gotta re- follow Zachy on Twitter. I mean, it's he's he's just a delightful. He's even got a pretty blue check next to his name, so he's certified. So you can always <laughs> you always know what he says. That's, is, that's the is, one and only thing I have in common with Donald J. Trump. <laughs> says you're certified. Hey, do you know the story about Bill Ramey, our friend, sitting next to Donald Trump at the Dark Knight Rises premiere back in two thousand twelve? Yes, I, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, they sat next to each other. Let's we'll have a conversation off mic about that at some point. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. I just want to say. Uh, I want to plug us, okay? In addition to our podcast, we we ask that you please follow us on Facebook. Our f- Facebook page is blown up. I mean, we're up to like almost fifty three hundred followers right now. Um, that all it just it's great. So thank you guys so very much for that. Uh, keep keep inviting friends to, to join in on those conversations and please also go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We're going to try to put more content up there and also follow us on Twitter at left shoe politic. There's no S because of character limitations. If you want to follow us individually on Twitter also, because sometimes just so you know who's, who's speaking, we try to sign everything, but it doesn't always happen. So you can follow me at she Rick S H E W R I C K. And you can follow Michael at Goody Malloy. So that's G O O D I E. M A L L O Y and Jeremy at Fit with Jeremy. And on behalf of Michael, Rick, and Jeremy, we all thank you so much for your support. And now we're going to have announcer Rachel take us out. Thanks for listening to this episode of our Left Shoe Politics Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Left Shoe Politics. Follow the Facebook page at facebook.com slash left shoe politics and the LSP website, leftshoepolitics.com. Search for our channel on YouTube, Stitcher, and Google Play. <laughs>